So once we have a balanced stoichiometric equation, we can use it to convert between the various quantities of the compounds, whether that be finding a measure of moles or kilomoles of a compound that's necessary given one of the others, or grams and kilograms. So going back to our reaction of methane that we found earlier, so we had the methane plus two moles of the oxygen yielded carbon dioxide plus two moles of water. And so we want to find how many kilomoles of methane and oxygen are needed to produce that 3.79 kilograms of water. So I'm going to start with the 3.79 kilograms of water. I'm going to need to convert that to moles since this is a molar equation. So to do that, so I've got one kilomole of the water I need the molar mass of the water, which hopefully we know from the one kilogram per atom uh, or per mole of hydrogen plus 16 for oxygen. So we have a total of 18 kilograms of water per kilomole of water. So then if we want to figure out how much uh, methane we need, we can go ahead and multiply that times the conversion of the molar mass or the mole ratio of methane and the water from our balanced equation. So I'm going to multiply that times, I've got one kilomole of the methane for every two kilomoles of the water. And so now if we look at our balancing here, we've got the moles of kilomoles of water cancel out, the kilograms of water cancel out, leaving us with what we were asked for, which was the number of kilomoles of methane. And so if we punch buttons on our calculator, we get 0 0.105 kilomoles of methane. Now for the second part, where we said we needed to also know how many kilomoles of oxygen are necessary, we're going to start the same way with that same 3.79 kilograms of water. We're going to convert that uh, amount of water into moles, which is what we have here. But now, at this stage, instead of using the conversion factor of one kilomole of uh, methane to the two kilomoles of water, we would have just replaced this with what we see here, two kilomoles of oxygen. So we just use a different uh, conversion factor from our stoichiometric equation. And so in this case, we're basically just going to end up with double the answer. So we're going to end up with 0.211 kilomoles of oxygen. Not exactly double in our final result if we use our proper rounding technique. In our second example, we're going back to the butane combustion, which was 2 moles of the butane plus 13 moles of the oxygen yielded 8 moles of the carbon dioxide plus 10 of the water. In our second example, we're going back to the butane combustion, which was 2 moles of the butane plus 13 moles of the oxygen yielded 8 moles of the carbon dioxide plus 10 of the water. And the difference in this case is we're given the number of liters of carbon dioxide we have and we want to find how many moles of butane and how many moles of oxygen are needed to produce that volume. So from our chemistry days, hopefully we recall that at standard temperature and pressure, one mole of gas uh, is the equivalent of 22.4 liters of that gas. So if we start with the 8 liters of carbon dioxide, we're going to convert that to moles. 22.4 moles of CO2 is the equivalent of, or sorry, liters of CO2 is the equivalent of one mole of CO2. And now I need to convert that number of moles of CO2 to butane using my stoichiometric equation. So I can see that that's eight moles of CO2 to 13, or sorry, to two moles of the butane, which produces, if we punch 
push buttons on our calculator, 0 0.0893 moles of the butane. And similar to what we did last time, we can use kind of the same start here with the carbon dioxide and then the converting the carbon dioxide into moles from the liters, but then use a different conversion factor here. So we've got 13 moles of oxygen to the 8 moles of CO2 instead of the 2 moles of the butane. And so then we end up with 0 0.580 moles of oxygen. So these are just a couple examples of how we can use a balanced equation to solve for some missing quantities uh, of other compounds.